Hey Brahmas, in this video we will showcase a database called JSTOR. Let's begin in the library's website and locate the tab that reads databases A through Z. By opening that tab up, you have access to all of our databases to which we subscribe to, even off campus. Now we are looking for a database called JSTOR. So that begins with the letter J, and I'm gonna go there and open that up. When I click on a certain database, our website's going to ask you for your student ID number and your month and date of birth. Once you log in, this is what the front page of JSTOR looks like. And before we start entering some keywords, let's think about what we're really searching for. In our assignment, you are supposed to select a piece of literature, like a short story or a poem, and then you're going to do research on an element related to a contemporary issue in society, or something like that. But you're doing secondary research about a piece of literature, so we're looking for secondary sources, that is, articles by other scholars that have written about the text that you have chosen. So what is our text? We, let's begin there. Let's say that I am interested in the Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. So it makes sense to type the title of my text and the name of the author. At this point, if you know other keywords specifically about your thesis or your arguments, you can enter them with this string of keywords to produce a more specific search. But if you're still not sure what your thesis really is or what your research question is really going to explore, then maybe you just want to start looking at some of the research that's already out there. So let's keep it simple for now and just click enter with these keywords. And all of these results simply mean, all of these results, they simply have the four keywords that we entered in our search bar. So it's not really anything specific, but it, it, it's up to us to start looking at some other research to see and discover perhaps a new keyword or a new concept or something about the short story that we hadn't thought about before, or maybe something that interests you and therefore helps you shape your research question. It's good to look at the titles because you might learn a um, concept or a keyword that you hadn't thought about before. For example, right here, JSTOR tells you that this is about gender roles and feminism and masculinity. So maybe you hadn't thought about these concepts. So maybe you're interested in this article. And now you can click on it because you're intrigued by the keywords that you saw. And once again, we are looking at the PDF of the article, which is pretty good because we can easily cite it since with the PDF, we can see the, the pagination, the page numbers of the pages of the articles when it was printed in, in, in its journal. So this article was published in a journal titled Science. And it seems like it's, well, I, I thought it was interesting, right? Because it's about gender roles and feminism and masculinity and maybe Marxism. I don't know. Do I know what Marxism is? Am I interested in that? This is the, kind, the, the kinds of questions that you might ask yourself as you're looking at these sources. And once again, it would help you to kind of skim through the article to see if it's actually going to help you with your research question or your thesis. And at this point, you're the only one who really knows what your thesis or your, re or your research question is. But keep in mind that those can evolve. They can change, especially as you're looking through our databases and, and other sources. So let's say that we are interested in this article and we want to save it so that we can read it later. So in this database, there is a button that says share. And you could click on email, but 
I've often found that when I try this, it tries to open up my email application within my laptop. And sometimes if I'm using a school computer, it won't really work. So I usually tell students for JSTOR, it's better for you to download the PDF through this button and email yourself the PDF. So if you're not using a personal laptop, you can open up your own email. And as you send the attachment of, of that PDF, you should also include this URL because this URL is a permanent, URL, uh, permanent link to find this article. And you see how it says stable? It, this, this URL will always take you back to this particular article. And in addition to that, I would also locate the citation and copy and paste it to my email that I'm going to send to myself. That way, in that email, I have the citation in MLA, the attachment as a PDF, and a link to come back to the database if I need to pull up this article from its database later on. So that is our tips in terms of mechanics with this database. Let's go back to our results. And let's look on the left hand side, um, the navigation tool called the refine results. So within all of these results, we can look for even more specific keywords. So let's say that you are intrigued by Marxist theory and you're thinking, oh, from this essay, my thesis is going to connect the short story and criticism from Marxist theory. So it would make sense for you to kind of want to read all the things that have the keyword Marxist or maybe Marxism. So this is a, a useful tool because I can search for any of these keywords and see, and what this will do, right? It will filter the 900 results that I originally had for only the articles that have the word Marxist. And as you can see, that query is reflected, reflected up top here. So, the database is looking for my first two, my first uh, four keywords, and now this additional keyword. But once again, the the job is up to you to scroll down and look at the titles of these articles and find the ones that are actually going to help you with your research question or your thesis. And this can take a lot of time because, of course, you have to click on emails. I mean, click on the articles and open them up and start reading them. But let me try something different. Um, in the On the left-hand side, I want to teach you... So before I enter Marxist you have to be aware that sometimes we don't know what the best keyword is for that concept, right? So I don't know if I sh really should be using Marxist or Marxism. But one technique that we can use is we can use the word or. So to tell the database, give me anything that has this one keyword and then this other keyword either or as long as it has one or both just show it to me right so this is going to expand our results and instead of 200 and something i can see now that we have 346. now the very first page of results might not reflect a huge difference because we might be seeing the same types of articles but Sometimes that or can be very useful, especially if you don't know uh, the right keyword for a particular concept. Now, another tool on the left hand side is the publication date. But since you're doing research on literary criticism, 
it doesn't really matter when these articles were really published. Now you could use one of these filters, but we usually don't recommend them that strongly. So ultimately, it really is up to your keywords. And you are encouraged, more than encouraged, to come back to your search bar and maybe play with the variations of keywords. Because depending on the types of keywords and how many you use, the algorithm of the databases might retrieve different articles. So let's try this again. The Metamorphosis, Kafka. I, I don't really need the, the first name, France. And let me try my, the keywords myself. So see, weirdly enough, even though I was kind of using the same keywords, I got a different number of results. But once again, it's still up to me to scroll down and see if I identify an article that piques my interest or that seems related to my thesis. And maybe at some point, I'm going to find something really interesting. Let's see. Um, let's say you were interested in this one, right? Marxism, and we can see that it has that word. And interestingly, it has communism, but it also talks about utopia. So that could probably pique your interest, right? And you could be thinking about your research question in a different manner. But once again, you have to click on the article, you open it up. This one, it's up to me, right, to start reading it and skimming through it to see what they're saying about Marxist theory and a utopian um, socialism, I think that's what it said. So this is where the, the work begins, right? I, as a researcher, have to read these sources so that I can be better prepared to write my own paper. And if I wanted to email myself this article to read it later, I recommend to open up your own email, you download the PDF, you copy and paste the permanent URL right here, and you also copy and paste the citation for this article. But keep in mind that citations from our databases are never 100% correct, so you should always double check them. Even if you are copying and pasting them, I mean, especially if you are copying and pasting them, you should double check them to make sure that they are following the appropriate citation style 